That, yeah, that's better. Come on. The Lord sent an AV tech. Come on. Can we give it up? Hallelujah. That's awesome. All right. Good morning, everybody. Sounds good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we are going to uh, jump in here. Hey, good morning. Thanks for uh, tuning in. So uh, if some of you guys didn't know, Pastor Tom, Kimberly, uh, and the Wheelers, they're uh, in South Carolina right now. They're on vacation. Uh, and so for these next couple of weeks, um, yeah, people like me are going to be filling in and uh, stepping up. And so I just want to pray and we're going to jump in uh, to the Bible study. Good morning. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, yeah. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity uh, to come before you. Uh, to come open up your word, dive in. And Father God, we just ask that you would give us ears to hear um, and open up our hearts um, just with expectation uh, that you're going to show up. Lord, you're so faithful to speak. You're so faithful uh, to move. Um, and so God, help us to just be aware of, of what you're doing, what you're saying. Um, let us all know that we have permission to get all that you have for us today. And so God, let me become a platform that on which you stand um, and deliver a, a word that will be edifying um, and that will draw us all closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so guys, I wanted to go to um, a familiar passage, uh, but I just kind of wanted us to, to dive in through, to it together. Uh, so we're going to be in John 11, um, and we'll, we, we might get through the whole verse or the whole chapter. Um, we'll start at verse 1. All right. Can you guys hear me way back there? Can't hear me. All right. Hmm? Can't hear. Okay. Crank me up a little bit. All right. Testing, testing. One, two. How about now? Better? I got to get pretty close to this thing. Is that good? Better? Okay, so we are in John, uh, John 11. And we're going to start at the first verse. Say amen when you get there. All right. Look at your neighbor, say you look good today. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, all right, so let's, let's go ahead and just dive on in. Uh, so John 11, it starts off, uh, so it starts off a certain... Uh, uh, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, whom, uh, he whom you love is sick. Now, I, yeah. You guys know me at this point. I'm always talking about evangelism. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I just have to pause right there because um, there's a follow-up question that I love to ask people uh, when I'm evangelizing. Um, and so a lot of times I go out and you know, I, I ask people probing, probing questions, um, kind of diagnostic questions, try to figure out where they are on the spiritual uh, spectrum. And uh, so, I, you know, a lot of times I ask them, like, hey, how are you in Jesus, right? Or, or are you a spiritual person? Um, whatever um, the question is. And, and so a lot of times I do get, you know, the response, oh, I love Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is my homie. You know, like me and Jesus go way back. Um, <laughs> um, and so sometimes that's genuine. Sometimes they're just like, hey, I know what to say, like, to get this guy to stop talking to me, Right. Um, and so I always, uh, or sometimes I asked a, a follow-up question and said, all right, well, um, you love God, but does Jesus love you, right? Does God love you? Or uh, you know God, but does God know you? Um, and everybody in this room, we all know, like, the answer to that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, God, you know, that's what he did. He, he judged my whole life. And he said, you know, I'll still go and I'll die for that one. Um, but, but a lot of people, if they aren't actually in a surrendered life with the Lord, um, they might not answer that uh, the right way. 
Um, but I just love the fact that, that we have a God, right? And that's, it's just a perfect bridge uh, to the gospel, right? So I can show them that God is af after their heart. God is for them. It doesn't matter their lifestyle. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what they look like right now in this moment. Um, God, God loves them right now. Um, not some future them, not some polished up version of them, but them right now. He loved them and he went to the cross to, 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 to die for them, right? Um, Jesus went to the cross to die for past, present, and future sins, right? So all of the stuff that we did in our past, all the stuff we're going to do today, all the stuff that we're going to do tomorrow, Jesus paid for at the cross. Is, do we believe that? Amen? Um, and so, so just this reality that, man, uh, he says, Lord, behold, he, he whom you love is sick. I just love that. <laughs> we can stay, we can stay there all day, guys. Like we're loved by God. Um, it's such a powerful thing. Um, and so when Jesus heard that, uh, he said, "This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may uh, be glorified through it." And that, yeah, that's so interesting. I and mean, I, I, I want to talk through this too. So. He said, this sickness isn't unto death, but for the glory of God, that God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Um, how many know that uh, sometimes, or you, you guys know that passage where it says that um, what the enemy planned for evil, um, God has turned for our good, right? How many know that, uh, or how many have a testimony that um, we don't always sit in the messes that we create? Right, like the glory or the grace of God is on our lives, so that um, we don't always have to clean up our own messes. <laughs> Amen. Um, and it, I, I feel like all of ours have that kind of testimony where, at some point, you know, we surrender and we give our life to Jesus, but then we, we're awakened or, or we we come to the knowledge of like, oh my goodness, when I was seven, I stuck a, you know, a, a metal knife in a toaster. And I survived or, or, you know, whatever the case is, like I like God, will, you start seeing how God has intervened throughout your life, you know, um, and now you can glorify him because now you realize you're in a surrender life with him. Right. Um, we all recognize that. Um, and but I but I feel like it's the mercies of God sometimes where he lifts up his hand of of, of grace over our life and he allows us to sit um in the messes that we create and for the purpose of us getting to the end of ourselves, us getting to that realization that we need a savior, us, us waking up to the reality that we all suck at being God of our own life, right? And that he needs to come and take his rightful place um, and be not only savior, but Lord of it all. And so that's what he's talking about here. This, this sickness is not unto death, uh, but it's for, the glory, it's for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it, right? That people are going to be saved through this, this act. Um, and so let's just keep diving in. Uh, now Jesus loved Martha uh, and, and her sister um, and Lazarus. Um, so when he heard, and guys, I'm in New King James, if it's uh, sounding... Uh, a little bit different than yours. Sorry about that. Um, so in verse five, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister uh, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days. <laughs> this, uh, this, this just doesn't sound right. It sounds, yeah, anyways. <laughs> he stayed two more days. Um, then after he said uh, to the disciples, let us go to Judea uh, again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lastly, uh, the Jews sought to stone you and you are going there again. So the disciples are like, why will we go there? Why? You know, uh, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If uh, anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he because he sees a light, he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light, the light is not in him. 
I'm going to read that one more time. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he, uh, he sees the light of, the, of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Oh, man, I think I just left stream yard. There we go. We're back. Um, so to me, that that the same, like, there's an urgency to this thing, right? Like, Jesus is, is putting this out like, man, while I'm here, right? While, like, Jesus is the light of the world. We know that. Um, we have to use the time that we have, right? Like, like we don't have, you know, if, if God put somebody on your heart, right, you got to reach out to him right now, right? You get, there should be a sense of urgency. Use the time that you have. Use the time that there's grace um, for, for the deliverance. Um, over um, this weekend or, or a, couple, a few days ago, uh, a good buddy of mine that, that I grew up with, um, you know, had a motorcycle accident and, and is gone. You're not, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised this day or the next day. If God is putting somebody on your heart, like let's, let's act on it, right? While the light of the world is here, why, 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 while uh, there's still life and, 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 and breath in our lungs. Are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone wants to walk, if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone who walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said after that he said, uh, these things he said, uh, and after he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may awake him up, that I may wake him up. That's pretty simple for Jesus to say. <laughs> uh, it's kind of harder for us to say. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will be good, he'll, be, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke to his death, but they thought that he was uh, speaking about uh, taking rest and sleep. <laughs> I think that's so funny. Like, Jesus, if he's sleeping, like, don't go over there waking him up. Like, like let him sleep. He's good. And we're good. We don't, let's not go over there to get murdered. Uh, then Jesus said uh, to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad uh, for your sake that uh, I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to uh, his follow, fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, he's, he's basically like, all right, you know, we don't, let's not let him die alone, you know, kind of zeal. I, but I love the zeal, I love the passion. It was like, all right, we're, we're in it for the long haul. We're going to go with him um, and he's probably going to die. He's, he's do, taking us to this crazy place. Uh, but we're not going to let him die alone. We're going we're gonna to die with him. Um, yeah, I, I pray I will have some zeal like that in, in a moment like that where I, I think it's life or death or whatever, that I would, I would run with Jesus uh, to the end. Um, and so now we get, we, we get to kind of um, the meat or where I want it to be. Uh, so when Jesus came, he found that, when Jesus came, he found that uh, he had already been uh, in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined uh, the woman around Martha and Mary uh, to, comf to comfort uh, them in, uh, concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as he heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Uh, but Mary was sitting in the, in the house now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, uh, my brother would not have died. And it's, it's hard because we don't know the tone, right? We don't really know. 
we don't know her tone here or, or like how she's approaching the throne, how she's approaching Jesus. If this is like, you know, if you would have been here, right? Or if it's like, man, if, if, you know, I don't know. We don't know. Um, now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And I don't really know what she means by that, because later on, you, we're going to hear that she says, you know, when Jesus is rising, you know, telling uh, them to move the stone, she's like, what are you doing? It stinks. So she's not saying like, hey, you can you can call him out right now. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'll, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the uh, resurrection at the last day. That's a pretty religious answer. <laughs> um, and I feel like as believers, um, sometimes we, we don't feel like we have permission to, to, to speak freely with the Lord or let, let the Lord be vulnerable enough to let the Lord know how we actually feel, right? You know, I don't know if you guys have ever met that, you know, uh, that person that was always like, hey, I'm too blessed to be stressed, <laughs> right? You ever, you ever see that? Or, or I'm too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's sometimes we do. We, 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 we feel like we have to present this thing to the Lord um, in a certain way, um, and, and we, we don't feel like, I can't show God my anger. I can't show God my brokenness. I can't show God, you know, how I actually feel about this situation. So I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. I'm sitting in this mess that I don't know how I'm going to get out of. Um, and sometimes we do. We, we just have these, you know, rehearsed or, 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 religious responses and and i just want to encourage us man like let's just let's bear it all he got he already knows god already knows where we are and what we're doing if you read through the psalms you can see david so often you know just freely you know telling god i'm not happy with you <laughs> right it's okay god knows our hearts uh, and he he wants us to to be able he wants our relationship to be um, to a place where we trust him so much so that, we, that we're able to be vulnerable with everything in, in the midst of our mess, in the midst of, you know, promises that we, you know, um, promises that we've been praying for and wanting that have just died. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally, um, so for the streamers, um, she said, uh, sometimes, or she, she doesn't have issue um, expressing herself to the Lord, um, but sometimes when it comes to um, expressing yourself to other believers, other Christians, or even non-believers, um, she feels, or like we can feel like we have this obligation to, um, hey, it's going to be all right, but I'm, I'm good, you know, I got faith and, and all these other things. Um, and I, I think that's a tough situation. I, I think it was situation by situation. Um, but I, I think more often than not, um, I, I think we should be men and women uh, who are not afraid to be vulnerable, not afraid to show people our struggles. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a healthy thing. Um, there's a healthy thing to be able to show somebody that I, this doesn't sit well with me, 
um, but then let them watch the process, right? You know, from, uh, it's so funny reading some of the Psalms where David is angry at God in the, when it starts, and then at the end of it, he's in worship and prayer, right? He's just like, ah, I'm so angry. And then at the end, it's like, God, you're amazing. And, and you know, there's nothing like you. And so inviting believers and non-believers into this process of like, hey, this is, this is my raw emotion. This is how I feel. I'm, I, I'm angry. I'm, I'm upset. I, I, I'm sad. I'm broken. Um, but then watching how God comforts and God steps in uh, to the mess and how we don't have to sit alone in these things. Um, but then also, um, are you, our struggles are not unique. Um, and so maybe that person in front of you um, has gone through something similar or gone through like God has, has given them, um, uh, yeah, the blueprints on how to, you know, navigate through that situation and has strategically put them in front of you um, to be a blessing to you um, in that time of need. But then we give this religious response um, and there's never, you know, that now we have to journey alone. Now we have to go through this whole process by ourselves. Um, and so I think it's definitely something to, um, to, yeah, debrief with the Lord uh, with situations, um, certain situations. But I think the default um, should be always, let's be vulnerable. Let's, let, let's, let's be vulnerable. Let's, let's not, yeah. I, I feel like church should be the place where we can be the most vulnerable. Um, and, and quite often um, it's the place that we're most guarded um, and feel like we have to be perfect and we, we can't mess up, right? Because I'm this, I'm that, um, or this person is going to judge me. Um, it shouldn't be like that. This is a place where we should be able to edify each other and build each other back up and say, you know, I, I'm with you. I'm standing with you. Um, does that make sense? I hope that I hope that makes sense. And so Jesus um, said, your brother uh, will, will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me through, uh, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives uh, in, and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's so powerful. So Martha is saying, yes, I know at the resurrection. And Jesus says, no, no, no. It's, it's not an at. It's not a, uh, a destination or a time frame. I am in. I am the resurrection. Hmm. That's so good. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I, and I, and I, I think he's asking Martha this, but I think he's also asking us this. Do you believe this? The situations come up in our lives. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she knew. Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think anybody knew he was going to be crucified um, because to them the the Christ was going to establish in their heads there he was going to establish an earthly kingdom that they were going to reign um, and so they weren't yeah their mindsets were very much this side of heaven um, and so I don't believe they thought that um, and even in um, you know Martha's things like oh yeah down the road it's going to happen like she's not thinking, hey, in a few minutes, we're about to go, and you know, this, st this stone's about to roll away, you know. Um, she's not thinking anything like that. It's just like, all right, yeah, 
and the resurrection. I, she, basically, she's saying, Jesus, I don't have a theology issue, right? I, I have a heart's broken, right? I, I'm good. I know, I know he's going to rise up. I don't have a theology issue right now. Um, and Jesus is like, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't see me. You don't get it. Um, does that make sense? Um, for the stream, yeah, I think they got it. <laughs> um, so in verse 27, uh, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. Uh, so uh, the son of God who is, uh, who is to come into the world. And when she, sorry, I got to pick this up. And when she had said uh, these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, and saying, the teacher has uh, come and his call is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, um, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the, uh, into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. When uh, the Jews who were with her uh, in the house and comforting her, um, in the house and comforting her, uh, when they saw that Mary arose quickly and went out, followed followed her, saying, she is going to, uh, to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came to Jesus, uh, then when uh, Mary came where Jesus uh, was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. I, I always love it, man. Like, Mary's always found at his feet. Um, she's always found at his feet. You know, Martha was working in the kitchen, um, and, and she was at his feet there, and, and she's at his feet now. Um, I just love that. Then when Mary came and um, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying uh, to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's like Mary and Martha were talking about this, right? Like they, they rehearsed that a little bit. Um, uh, my brother um, would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. What do we notice about the two different approaches for Martha and, and, and Mary? I feel like Mary, like, or, or Martha, like we said earlier, it's kind of this like religious, you know, response. Um, and you look at Mary and, and she's, she's broken at the feet of Jesus. Like she comes just weeping. When's the last time we, we were, were found weeping at the feet of Jesus or broken at the, at the foot of the cross? Over any issues in our lives because we are sick or some, uh, one of our loved ones was sick or the state of our nation. When's the last time we were broken at the foot of the cross? Because I do believe God wants to, I, I believe, you know, a third great awakening is coming. I, I believe there's a revival coming to our nation, um, but I, I think it's going to take. I think it's going to take some travail. I think it's going to take some some weeping and at the feet of Jesus. Um, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, "Where?" Have you laid him? Not that he didn't know, but I think he just wanted to move the whole crowd to the graveside. Then he uh, he said to him, Lord, uh, they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying. And there's always going to be different folk in the, in the crowd. <laughs> you 
you know, some people are just like, oh my goodness, his heart is broken over this guy. And I was like, yeah, well, if he were showed up two days ago, you know. Then Jesus again uh, groaned in himself, came to the tomb. It was uh, a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. So back in the day, um, so we, we believe that uh, Martha, Lazarus, Mar uh, Mary uh, were from a family that was well off. Um, and so what would happen is they would embalm the body um, and they with, with cloth. They're not um, in Egypt. He wouldn't have been a, he wouldn't not have been a mummy um, or anything like that, but they would uh, they would have bound his, his arms and legs and wrapped him up in this cloth with, with coverings over his head. Uh, they would put grave clothes on him. And so then um, this, there, this would have been their family cave. Um, and so there were probably like carvings, like beds carved out in the cave, and they would put the body there. Um, and uh, they'll put him in there, and like two years later, um, they will come, they'll open the stone, um, and it would just be bones at that point, and they'll take him and, and bury him, and then the cave will be ready for somebody else um, in the family. Um, and so there's also this uh, tradition um, during that time where um, they believe that the spirit of a person rested over the, the body for um, three days, right? Um, and so after the third day, like, um, like he wouldn't have any, like his eyeballs would be gone and like, all, like he'd be smelling. And, and, and so he'd be so unrecognizable by the spirit that the spirit would go on and uh, go to heaven or wherever they believed. Um, and so this isn't biblical, but this is what the Jews and a lot of the people uh, in that area believed. Um, and so I think it's significant that Jesus went beyond their tradition, right? Like, like, no, he is gone. Like nobody's thinking anything like that. They're, they're thinking his soul and um, his spirit is gone uh, to be with the Lord um, at this point. Um, and so take away the stone. And Martha said, um, the sister of him who uh, was dead said to him, Lord, by uh, this time there is a stench. <laughs> Uh, for he has been uh, dead four days. Um, and so again, she's like, what are you doing? You know, like, uh, is, is he is he here just to, um, is he, does he just want to view the body? Like nobody's thinking like this body is going to rise up again. Um, and so there's a, he said, she says that there's a stench for he's been dead for four days. Uh, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, that if you uh, would believe, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone uh, from the place where uh, the dead man was laying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of this, because of uh, the people who are standing by, I, I said this, that they may believe that you uh, sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried. Now this cried is different than the, than the weep. This, this, this cried is like, man, like tears are just flowing down his face. Um, and just, yeah. I love that we, we, we have a God that, that cries with us. I love that we have a Lord that is relatable, who, who has experienced suffering, who has experienced, um, who, who can empathize, who, who has empathy. And he says he cried uh, with a loud voice. And at this point, Lazarus' eardrums have, you know, are decayed, right? Like he, he doesn't, Lazarus can't hear anything. Um, so he's crying aloud so that the multitude of people can hear. Or, you know, maybe he's, he's crying because Lazarus is like, no, no, I ain't going back. 
<laughs> right? Lazarus is in glory. Lazarus is in heaven. Um, maybe maybe he's, he's crying out, Lazarus, get your butt back over here. Um, no. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think he's, he's, he's saying, Lazarus, come forth with this loud voice um, so they all could hear, right? So that everybody standing around could hear. Um, and he who had died came out uh, bound hand and foot uh, with grave clothes, and he, uh, his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Um, and it's just a, such a powerful a powerful thing. So I don't even, like, his, he's bound hand and foot. Right. And so I don't know if like he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the body just floated uh, to the front or like because it doesn't seem like he will be able to walk. But nevertheless, like he's he Lazarus comes forth. And we don't have this picture of, of their responses. Right. We don't have uh, we don't have many reactions from the crowd of like, what in the world? Right. Like like somebody who has been mourning for four days over a loss of a brother, over a loss of, you know, a friend. What what they saw, what they see, uh, what they were feeling in their hearts. Um, but I know they, they ran to him and they immediately ran to him and they, they started removing some of those grave clothes. Um, and I, I, I it's just a, such a beautiful picture. Um, and from that, I, I always have this analogy of, uh, or I always share this analogy of sanctification. Um, so, sanct so we all know justification, like we're completely just in what God has done for us at the cross, right? And so with that, we are, we are made right with the Lord through the, the shedding of blood that Jesus did at the cross. Um, but sanctification is this lifelong process. Uh, where God is is narrowing the gap between what we say and what we do. God is narrowing the gap um, of our hypocrisy that we have in our lives. Um, it's, it's the reality that we're not perfect, right? That when we confess, you know, our, when we confess our, our life to, to God, um, we didn't like every, you know, our life didn't just become sunshine and rainbows. Right, like we still have struggles, we still have temptations, and and all these other things. We're still human, um, and so this whole process of sanctification, I liken it to um, Lazarus taking out the grave clothes. Right. So when Jesus says Lazarus come forth, he was immediately made right. He was he was he was alive again. Right. That's the new birth. Like we we're completely just. That's justification, and sanctification is this process of removing grave clothes. Like, I'm no longer dead in my trespasses. I'm no longer. And so I shouldn't look like this, right? I shouldn't, I shouldn't wear these clothes any longer. I got to take away the veil. I got to take away. I got to crucify some of this flesh, right? And it's a lifelong process. And so not only uh, do brothers and sisters, right, come alongside us and help us remove those grave clothes, uh, but then also we have to peel back some layers ourselves, Right. And I, I think that's what we were talking about earlier, that being OK with being uh, vulnerable and showing people that I'm not perfect. Right. I still got some grave clothes on. Right. And that people can come alongside us and help us remove those things um, and show us how to remove them, because sometimes we don't even know how to do it. Right. You know, Lazarus might have said, I don't know how to untie this knot. Right. I need somebody else to come over and help me through it. Um, and so. They remove the, the, the grave clothes and Lazarus come forth. Man, I, I really wish that we could hear, like we don't hear anything from Lazarus. Uh, I, I, I wish, you know, we have some, a recording of what he would say, right? Because now he knows, right? Now he's, he's, taste, he's, he's seen the other side, right? He says, man, you left glory to come here, right? You, 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 you left the throne um, to come here. Man, I wish we would have got some, some of his perspective. And he who was dead came uh, out bound hand and foot and with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. 
Then many of the Jews who had uh, come to Mary uh, and had seen these things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them uh, went away uh, to Pharisees and told them the things that Jesus did. I just think that's so crazy. So, so most of the people, right, I would assume in the crowd were like, oh my goodness, I believe. Like, you are who you say you are. You just raised some, you know, guy who's dead for four days, right? You know, like, you just raised him from the dead. I believe. I'm a believer now. And some of them were like, I got to tell you, I got to go snitch. <laughs> Like, what in the world? This doesn't make any sense. How would, how would you not, how can you witness this? And still like, yeah, mm -mm, he shouldn't be doing this. You know? And so they went and they told uh, the things that Jesus did. Uh, then the chief priests um, and the Pharisees gathered a, uh, a council and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs uh, if we let him alone um, like this, everyone will believe in him. And as believers, what? What do they see? Why, do, why, would, why would you not want everybody to believe in Jesus? He said everyone will believe in him. And the, Rome, uh, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation, right? They're gonna take away our power. They're gonna take away our authority, take away our position. We, we won't have a position anymore. So is that the heart behind it? And I think um, I just wanna stop right there and, and just kinda, at some point we, we yeah, I want to go back to Jesus, who had all the authority and all the power to rise a man, raise a man from the dead. Still calls to them and said, hey, remove the stone. Roll the stone away. And I think a lot of times we, we, we forget that Jesus wants to partner with our hearts. Right. There, there's, there's a portion that we have to do or that, you know, better spoken is, is there's a portion that we get to do. Right. And so when it comes to this revival, when it comes to, you know, a great awakening coming to our nation, we have to roll the stone away. We, there, there's something on us. God, what do you need me to do? Right. Is that just to come, you know, come to your feet broken, come to your feet, you know, with travail and, and, and trembling and crying? Well, what is it? Is it? Is it to go to my neighbor and have a tough conversation? Or is it to go to my neighbor and be vulnerable? Um, is it to, to go, I don't know what it is, but I think we all have to wrestle with it. What is that stone? Um, what is that stone in our lives? that God is calling us to, to roll away so that he can do a, a mighty work. Does that make sense? Man, it's just such a powerful story. It's such a powerful story. Now this he did, not saying, oh, wait, right. Um, so let's jump back in. I forgot where I was. Nor do you, uh, oh, where are we? I'll just start back at 49. And one of them, um, where are we? And one of them, uh, Caiaphas being high priest, uh, that year said to them, you are nothing at all, nor do you consider uh, that this is ex uh, expedient for us that uh, one man should die uh, for the people and not that uh, the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, 
uh, but being a high priest that year, uh, he prophesied that Jesus would die uh, for the nation and not for the nation only, but also that he would uh, gather together uh, in one, the children of God who are scattered abroad. <laughs> That's so cool. Like even if, um, yeah, God can use um, his enemies to, to, to prophesy. God can use, you know, um, your enemies, my enemies, um, to speak into our lives. Um, then from that day on, they uh, plotted to put him to death. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, uh, but went from uh, there into the country near uh, the wilderness uh, to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. And the Passover of the Jews uh, was near, and many went uh, from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover um, to purify themselves. Then they sought, uh, then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think that he will not come uh, to the feast? Uh, now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone uh, knew where he was, he should uh, report it. Uh, that they might seize him. Um, what a powerful chapter. Um, and so my biggest takeaway is, is um, bear it all at the feet of Jesus. Um, don't come re religiously, um, come vulnerable, um, bear it all. Seek after those things that God wants to partner with and wants us to um, partner with his heart and to establish in the earth. Um, yeah. And then focus every day on removing those grave clothes, right? Allowing God in to every facet of our life, right? Um, for a long time, you know, there were certain areas in my life where I was like, all right, God, you know, you got this area. I gave you this one. I gave you this one. Um, but I'm going to do this one. I, I can control this one. I'm pretty good at this one. Um, God wants everything, right? He wants everything, every aspect of our life. And so invite him into your family, um, your, your work, um, your finances, um, and let him be Lord of it all. Amen. Well, guys, I hope this uh, was a blessing to you. We are um, going to dive back uh, into the countdown. And so, um, yeah, get some coffee and refreshments and we'll be over there. Um, but I just want to pray for us real quick um, before I do that. Ah, gracious Heavenly Father, oh, you're so amazing. You're so amazing. God, you're so faithful every single step of the way. Lord, you, you've been faithful in our lives. Um, you're always proven to be faithful. And so help us to, to trust you. Trust your will is for us and, and it's never against us. And that we can come to your feet um, broken. We can come to your feet, um, you know, smelly. <laughs> Just like Lazarus, we can come to your feet, Lord, um, dead in our trespasses. And, and, and you sit in the mess with us. And you'll walk, walk this thing out with us. You're a God that relates. Um, and what a beautiful thing. So God, we just ask that you give us boldness. Um, yeah, boldness to, to be vulnerable in public and, and, and in front of our brothers and sisters and, and to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. If I can figure out this mouse, we're going to jump into a countdown. There we go.